All right, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Fred has asked me to address a comment from a previous video. And he, this is what it says. Here, here is a section. He does not command people to sacrifice their firstborn children to him. He does not enjoy the scent of burning flesh or tell people to offer up human and animal sacrifices to him. He does not command people to go and steal other people's lands uh, constantly and take their women and children as booty. The God of the Bible is an imposter. Uh, so um, the obvious question would be well, if the God of the Bible is not God, <laughs> who is God? You? Are you God? No, I don't think so. Um, so I forget the, the name, whoever wrote this doesn't matter. Fred is just wanting me to, this is not what Fred believes. This is just what he wants me to, to, uh, see if I can tackle this, if you will. All right. So let's start at the beginning. He does not command people to sacrifice their firstborn children to him. So let's go to Genesis 22. This is where, uh, God, uh, comes to Abram, Abraham, and uh, he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. All right, so the history of this goes all the way back, um, really, to Cain and Abel, uh, when uh, Cain made better or I'm sorry, Abel made better offerings than than Cain did, and Cain got jealous and, and slayed Abel. But um, what happens is uh, when people make these offerings to God, it is uh, one, it's a to sort of pay for their debt to God, right? Uh, to cover their sins and. This was this happened before the flood, and this happened with Noah and his sons after the flood uh, to make these offerings to God. And now, remember, this is before Moses and everything, right? So, uh, what they would do is they would uh, make offerings, burnt offerings, to God to cover their sins. All right, and so the idea here is that. Abraham could offer his son uh, to cover all sins, right? And then this was going to happen. Uh, but uh, the angel stopped him. And instead of offering um, Isaac, God told him to offer a lamb instead. Now, this was not good enough, but this was... You know, Abraham showed his faith in God, that he was willing to do whatever God said. So this, so because he had great faith, he was rewarded. And uh, instead, uh, God provided a lamb instead, right? So then, now this lamb was an animal, but that lamb is not good enough for the the blood of bull. Uh, of bulls and goats is not good enough, right? So, um, what happened eventually is what happened is uh, God provided His own Son, a one-time sacrifice to cover all sins. Okay. Um, so that you know, you got to know the the context, the history of why uh, there is this offering to cover sins. And the reason why there is, is because you sin. We all sin ever since um, Adam and Eve. People have sinned. So you got to have, you, how are you going to cover your sins? Can you think of another way? If, if uh, Jesus doesn't cover your sins, how are your sins going to be forgiven? All right? I mean, that's, there's just no way around it. No way to get around that. You're a sinner. You're not perfect. 
guaranteed you're not perfect. You need a savior. So how, who are you going to depend on? Right? If you're not depending on Jesus Christ to save you, who are you going to depend on? And uh, let's see, did I just, or did I already show that? I did, I think. Uh, for it is not possible for the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. But Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son, gave us a one-time sacrifice, once and for all, to cover all sins for all time, forever and ever. All right, so, then, uh, he says, this person says, uh, he does not command people to go and steal other people's lands. Okay, so this is interesting here because you're assuming that land belongs to somebody else. Now, God has promised land to his people, and it was that land was being possessed by people who hated God, who did not fear God, uh, who disobeyed God. And, uh, and I'm not sure that I want to... Let me read this one here. And, and the Lord... Your God, he shall expel them from before you and drive them from out of your sight, and ye shall possess their land as the Lord your God has promised you. Okay, so that land was promised to them. So that's why their land was overtaken. They didn't fear God. They were evildoers. And that land belonged to God's people, not to the evildoers. So that's why they went in there and drove them out. And I think the other uh, the other question was about booty, right? And let's see, where am I at? Jeremiah uh, 49 would be a good example. Uh, Rise, get ye up unto the wealthy nation that dwelleth without care. They don't care, saith the Lord, which have neither gates nor bars, which dwell alone, and their camels shall be a booty, and the multitude of their cattle a spoil. Now scatter into all winds them that are in the utmost corners, and I will bring calamity from all sides. Therefore saith the Lord. All right, so there was there's no question. Let's see, there's got to be a, uh, right there. Right here, let me read this one first. Okay, this is a great one. This is uh, Zephaniah. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Therefore their good shall become a booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses and not inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and not drink the wine thereof. Okay, so the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. So this is a very flawed mindset to think that uh, God won't do any good. is ridiculous, right? But it's also a flaw to think that he won't do evil. All right, if you're an evil doer, and if you're, um, if you completely reject God, and you're following other gods, uh, you're making a mistake to think that God won't destroy you. A very big mistake. So, of course, it's completely logical that evil doers, people that worship false gods and other gods though they will be destroyed and i guess the complaint would be well that's just mean that's just mean that god would destroy wicked evildoers all right so the question becomes that whose side are you on right are you on God's side or are you on the side of the wicked evildoers and complaining that God is destroying the wicked evildoers? Think about that. All right, so, and then constantly take your women and children as booty. The God of the Bible is an imposter. Okay, so that, I think that covers it. Uh, that covers it uh, pretty good. I, the, there's a whole, there's a reason why all this is happening. And there's a reason why the Bible just, uh, tells the stories that it tells it should be serve as an example that you better get right with God or you will be destroyed period you better fear God right the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and I'm not sure if how else to say it right